Hi, it's Julie from the Petawawa Military Family Resource Center, and I want to welcome you to a special edition of our Fireside Chat. Today we are talking about volunteers. Um, volunteers have a very, very special place in the heart of the Petawawa Military Family Resource Center. And if you've been following us on social media, you know that we have been recognizing our volunteers uh, this week and thanking them for all the fabulous things that they do uh, around the PMFRC. Uh, before I start, I just want to introduce the folks that are on the call with us today. Claudia Beswick is the Executive Director of the PMFRC and a regular guest on Fireside Chat. Uh, Sarah Gunter is our Volunteer Coordinator. And I also want to take the time to recognize two special guests, two of our, uh, our regular volunteers, uh, people who step up and have done so much with the agency, uh, Amanda Woods and Carla Lister. Thank you all for joining me today. Um, as we go through today, we are going to be talking about a couple of different things and we're going to share some email addresses and talk about things that you can find on the website. Um, we are going to share all of those things uh, below in the comment section. So if somebody talks about something and you didn't quite get it or you didn't get the email address down, um, don't worry about not, uh, not grabbing it. Uh, check back later. That'll all be in the comment section so everything will be nice and easy to find. Uh, Claudia, we always start these things off talking about where we are in our brand new COVID world. Um, what's open, what services are available, and how people can find them. Uh, do you want to give us an update on what's happening this week? Yes, so um, we're continuing to follow the provincial lockdown procedures, and what that means for us is that our locations are closed to the public, uh, but that being said, uh, both our Northside office and our Petawawa Employment Service office will be offering essential services with limited staff in the building, so you can't physically come in and see us but you can definitely give us a call. Um, call the office, someone will be able to answer your questions or direct you to other staff if you're looking for someone else. As Julie said, she'll have those contact numbers in the section below. Morale mail uh, can still be dropped off at the Northside office during working hours. Parcels are being picked up regularly, so it is still the touchless drop-off process. The trolley is outside the door of the ramp and you just drop your parcel on the trolley make sure all your paperwork has been filled out. Please make sure you have a contact number on that parcel. If there's any issues with the post office, then uh, we'll be able to call you and get the information that's needed for that. If you are not sure what needs to go on the customs paperwork, you can check out the information on the website um, or you can call the front desk. Natasha and Angel will be happy to give you the information that you need. Our programs are still available virtually, and if you're looking for specific staff, call the front desk. They'll give you the email addresses that you need to reach out to them. Uh, staff email addresses are on the website, so you can find it that way as well if you need to. If you don't know who to contact, give us a call. Remember, there are still key services that haven't changed. If you're new to Petawawa, call us for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, virtual welcome session, uh, access to emergency child care, our emergency family care assistance is available. So if you're having challenges with your family care plan, give us a call. Uh, during working hours, it's our number and it's the duty padres after hours. Deployment support, we're still doing DAGs and briefings. So any families dealing with deployment can connect with our deployment team. Mental health, uh, the counseling and brief service sessions are still going on. So you can reach the family advocacy coordinator if you need supports in that department. And then again, all of our general programming uh, is still taking place. So you can catch up on videos that we've already done on YouTube and on Facebook, more information on the website. So monitor the social media pages uh, and our website. And as soon as, um, uh, as soon as we are allowed to open, when all of the restrictions have lifted, you can bet we will have that information available on any location that we can do that. And as always, I will always finish by saying feedback is very, very important to us. Suggestions, comments, um, any challenges that you're struggling with, you can email us, you can message us on Facebook, you can click the link on the website and that stuff comes directly to me. Happy to hear it all. We take all of the uh, information that we get seriously. So really would like to uh, hear from you guys if you have anything you'd like to share. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Claudia. I appreciate uh, you appreciate your help and you bringing us through that. Um, before we go on, I know that volunteers are near and dear to your heart. Um, earlier in your career, you were a volunteer coordinator at another MFRC. Um, so you're used to working with volunteers and you really understand sort of the difference that they make in, in MFRC programming. Uh, can you talk a little bit about volunteers and what they mean to us? 
never really ceases to amaze me the professionalism and the experience and the expertise that volunteers bring to the table. They're such diverse um, area of expertise. And, and when you look at the military lifestyle, there's so many different um, experiences that come up and they are always willing to share. So there's many different reasons that volunteers volunteer, but ultimately it's their willingness to share their life and their professional experience uh, in a very meaningful, significant, and it's so inspirational to see sometimes the growth that develops with not just with the volunteer, but also sometimes even with the staff that are working with the volunteers. So from all levels of the organization, volunteers have left their mark. We have our volunteer board of directors who govern the organization. They ensure that our mandates and our objectives meet all of the needs of the local community here in Petawawa. The volunteers who on a regular basis participate and support our various activities and programs and special events of which, you know, pre-COVID we had a lot of, a lot more of. Uh, volunteers support our child care programs, they assist in the deployment departments, they lead workshops, um, they stepped up to participate in various committees, which is hugely helpful, getting some of the, the voice of the community, letting us know how we can move forward in our programs. And, you know, <laughs> volunteering has looked a little bit different for us this past year because of the pandemic, but Sarah really made it a point to stay connected with everyone, taking a, a collaborative approach to volunteering, seeing where volunteers were needed within the community, not just within the MFRC, and working with other charitable organizations that also rely on volunteers. Uh, if I, I think if I had to pick one significant accomplishment, and Sarah will probably just kind of cringe, but it was the uh, sewing of over 5,000 masks that we did for the garrison, which took a lot, but it was a super accomplishment and, and a sense of pride, I think for the volunteer department because it took a lot of people to get that all done so kudos to to everybody on that so despite all the challenges that the pandemic has brought volunteers continue to be really enthusiastic about volunteering and that matters because one of our strategic priorities is to expand our volunteer opportunities improve our networking engage and and recognize the um, commitment from the volunteers it's been a year of reflecting on really meaningful opportunities for our volunteers and how we can continue to support them while also providing opportunities for them to learn new and different experiences. So without a doubt, absolutely miss seeing our volunteers walking in the halls, working with our teams, participating in all the activities. But <clears throat> despite the restrictions and the various lockdowns, volunteers have really continued to leave their mark and we're really humbled. Uh, by their dedication and, and uh, commitment to the PMFRC. So thank you. Thanks, Claudia. Um, on that, that tone of thanking volunteers, we, if you follow us on social media, you can see that it is our national uh, volunteer thank you week. Um, Claudia, uh, Sarah, do you wanna talk a little bit about what's happening on social media and what we're doing to recognize our volunteers? Yeah, absolutely. So echoing everything that Claudia said, we're so grateful. We miss all of you. Um, this week looks a little bit different as the year looks a little bit different for most of us. So all of our celebrations will be virtually uh, throughout the week. We have videos, posts, um, everything honoring our volunteers. Even though it's virtual, it's still in our forefront to thank everyone for all their dedication. Also included as part of our um, volunteer recognition week, we have put together some thank you gifts. So earlier this week, I reached out um, to our volunteers and had them pick and choose what they would like. So we did it in a form of curated boxes. The boxes are in, which is very exciting. However, due to restrictions, uh, we can't get them out to you. But as soon as, like Claudia echoed, as soon as we get that green light to be able to do that, um, I will definitely be in contact with the volunteers to get that out. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I think it's one thing to talk about volunteerism as a concept and what it means to the MFRC, but I think the discussion um, isn't really real unless we can actually talk to some of our volunteers and the folks that uh, step up, that show up, that really help us out and really add um, their personal touch to our programs and make all of the difference because uh, I think when you bring part of yourselves, you really have an impact on the way things go. Um, Amanda Woods and Carla Lister are two of our volunteers that we see a lot that step up and that are uh, putting up their hand when those opportunities come. Um, thank you for joining us today. Can I'm going to throw it open, I guess, an open-ended question. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do with the MFRC, why you volunteer, and I guess I can take it from there, whatever you'd like to share about, about volunteering generally. Um, do you want to start, uh, Amanda? Um, sure. Uh, I started volunteering 
um, when our family first moved here a couple years ago. And for me, it was a really good way to get out and to meet people and to work on different skills that I have. And I've learned so many more in the process. <laughs> it's really been, um, it's really been a great opportunity for me. And it's something that I really, really enjoy doing. Thank you. Um, so some, some of the um, volunteer opportunities that I've had so far has been everything from face painting to working on decorations for different events, which has been awesome. And then uh, most recently, it's been moved over to Zoom classes, which was something I didn't even think I could do. <laughs> um, but they were great. And it's probably one of my most favorite uh, volunteer opportunities yet. Thank you. And as a, as, a, as a staff employee who does not have a, a strong creative streak, um, we very much appreciate those creative folks that step up and, and, uh, and, and agree to assist us and lend their expertise in that area. Carla, uh, do you want to talk about why you volunteer and some of the things that you've done with the PMFRC? Sure. Um, I volunteer because it's really rewarding and I think it's mutually beneficial. And also because I like contributing to help shape and shape the services and events that we all use and enjoy. I've been a volunteer um, with the PMFRC and with emergency childcare provided through the PMFRC. So I've done that one for five years. Um, and I've worked with Kitty College, employment services, um, reviewing CVs and that kind of fun stuff and also doing job fairs. And that was a lot of fun. Um, I've worked with deployment services um, I mentioned emergency child care. So that's when children come in, in your home in emergency situations. And I think that one was one of the most rewarding and it's still very rewarding because I know firsthand what it's like to try and search for, you know, a solution last minute in when you're in an emergency situation and just knowing that there are resources to help you is, is amazing. Um, and I've also helped with in different capacities for events um, I'm not as creative as Amanda. I'm more <laughs> of the practical mind. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I love that you talk about everybody has their, their different reasons for volunteering and different things that they bring to the table, but all of those things mean so much. And uh, if we had one type of volunteer that wanted to do one thing and that's all we had and we didn't have that variety, it, we wouldn't just have as much of a rich experience as we do. So I think it's about, you know, what everybody brings to the table and all the different things that you can contribute that we as staff members maybe not don't have access to. Um, Sarah, is there anything you want to talk about as volunteer coordinator to add to this discussion? Yes, so I am very excited to share that as part of our annual recognition event, we typically give out two awards. Um, so they are based on nominations. So the first one that we have is our Volunteer of the Year Award. Um, and that Volunteer of the Year recipient is um, a person that contributes a high level of dedication and commitment to the PMFRC and overall a high contribution to volunteer hours. And then our second award that we have is the Award of Merit. Um, again, equally contributes a high level of dedication, except for they exemplify the spirit of volunteering, they encourage, they inspire others to get involved. So I'm so excited, so thrilled. I have a secret agenda of why I invited Amanda and Carla to the session today. Our, <laughs> I wish we had a drum roll, um, but this year's award, um, Volunteer of the Year Award goes to Amanda. So congratulations. And then the award of merit goes to Carla. Equally, I snuck them on. I have it here. I will get it to you when in, it's safe to do so. Um, but we're just so thrilled to have you apart. We're actually losing Carla this year. She's um, being posted out. So that's um, sad for us, but very exciting because I know you'll make a difference worth it at your next posting, which is great. And Amanda, I selfishly am so glad that we get to keep having you and we will do this in person. So thank you so much. It means the world to us that you are a volunteer. Thank you so much, ladies. We really appreciate it. I don't know if you want to say anything you are welcome to if you want to. Um, we apologize that we have to do this virtually. Unfortunately, this is uh, the only way that we were able to, to recognize you. We wish we could do it in person and have that opportunity to, I would say, shake your hand, but that seems like such a strange concept nowadays. Um, but to say to thank you in person for everything uh, that you do. Um, Claudia, just before we wrap up, we talk about uh, volunteer recognition. One of our key partners in the volunteer recognition pro uh, process is Canix. Do you want to talk a little bit about our relationship with Canix and what they bring to the table? 
Sure. Since 2005, Canix um, has provided support to both our organizations, the MFRC and PSP volunteers, for our annual volunteer recognition event. It's something that we look forward to every year, not only because we get to recognize so many volunteers, but we also get a deeper understanding of the caring and compassionate engagements that volunteers create, supporting both, or, both of our organizations. And that's a direct impact to the families that we're both, both of our organizations support. Canix is an integral partner for the PMFRC. Their support and collaboration are really an important part of our success. They've provided a volunteer recognition grant for many years, which allowed us to do the um, annual celebration event. And that alone was instrumental in um, our success of paying tribute to our volunteers. Canix truly understands the commitment, time, effort, and experience that volunteers uh, devote in helping our organizations in supporting military families. So now Canix is going above and beyond again. Um, they're announcing a new initiative that uh, will not only continue to recognize volunteers locally, but they'll also expand and enhance their commitment nationally. So um, I am not gonna say much more on that. Stay tuned for more information. It's coming out soon. Sarah is gonna have the, um, the fun of uh, sharing what those details are and how we're gonna collaborate more with Canix. Uh, so we can celebrate our volunteers all year round. So I think um, definitely something to look forward to. And we really, truly appreciate the commitment from Canix. Uh, we're very lucky with uh, Jerry as our local Canix manager. He, he's always willing to support um, a lot of our activities and efforts, even outside of the uh, volunteer program. So really looking forward to um, a new modernized way of celebrating all the hard work, dedication, and commitment that volunteers bring to the table. Thank you, Claudia. Um, Sarah, if someone's watching this video and they're thinking to themselves, I would really like to volunteer with the PMFRC. I have something that I want to contribute. Um, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so the best way to get a hold of me right now, uh, given our state of things, is by email. So it'll be posted below, but it's volc.pmfrc at belnet.ca. Um, if you want further information on volunteering and what it looks like for us at the PMFRC, you can always visit our website, capconnection.ca. But reach out to me anytime, day or night. Um, you'd be surprised. I might even answer your email in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> that's just the way it goes. I'm here for to support you, and I can always pass on any resources if it's not related to volunteering as well. Just feel free to reach out. Thank you so much, everybody. Amanda and Carla, uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for everything that you do at the PMFRC. Um, keep watching our social media this week. We've got a lot of really interesting, interesting information um, about volunteerism and the contribution that volunteers make at the PMFRC. Have a wonderful day and we will see you soon.